Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. I am Kyle once again and you join me, oh there's my mouse, you join me uh, in the junction between Zephyr and the Pass of Karak. Now I think I want to do some detailing today. I would like to have some fun creating little things and making things look pretty. So that's what I have decided today's episode is gonna well, actually, it's not going to start there. What am I saying? We're going to start with some uh, corrections on some uh, player classes real quick. Sorry I lied to start with. Uh, and then we'll move over to this segment right here. I want to work on the kind of transition between the two zones to start with. I've got a pretty cool idea. Hopefully I can execute. But before we get into that too detailed, I would like to bring up our design page. And we're going to look at those player classes that we concluded last time were a little bit on the OP side. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Now, I know based on, uh, let's go to the overview as well. If we look at levels now, specifically, we have a lot more level two players and we're starting to get more level three players. I am assuming that the players who have reached level two, because there's more of them now than anything else, are starting to, to conclude that basically our level two abilities are OP on a couple of our pl uh, player classes, and that's why we're getting this domain for nerf. Now, if we look at the wizard and the fighter of Saphir, fighter of Saphir has got a lot of demand for nerf. That's kind of where the issue lies at the moment. So I'm gonna assume that since both of these uh, player classes are actually low on the defensive side of things, it's actually probably more to do with uh, their overall DPS, specifically the DPS on their level two abilities. So really quickly, this is what I'm gonna experiment with on the wizard. I'm gonna keep mana the same. I think I already tweaked damage over time because if this is damage over time, that's only 0.2 a second for eight seconds. Maybe, I feel like there should be some upfront damage, and at level 2, that's 1.5 damage, 2.4 over 8 seconds. I mean, that really doesn't seem like it's that much, but uh, yeah, players tend to not really like this, it seems like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the time frame to 6 seconds of burn, and 1 point, uh, what would that be, 1.2. So it's still the same damage per second at 0.2, but it's not going to last as long, so overall... It won't do as much. Let's see where that takes us for that player class. And then uh, our Fighter of Zephyr, I'm assuming it's our upper hand ability, uh, takes a big chunk of rage, damage over time, because it's I wanted a bleed effect and a weaken. Maybe the weaken is too much. That's, that's actually an easy way to nerf this. Let's bring it down to 15. Let's keep it four seconds. Um, and then two damage over 10 seconds, that's only 0.2 damage per second as well, which is not, uh, not that bad. Maybe maybe I need to bring this down, maybe eight sec, uh, 10 seconds is too long. We'll bring this down to eight as well, and then we'll keep that uh, 1.2, so basically bring that down to where the wizard was. Uh, that's, that's a considerable nerf, both on the upfront damage and, oh, sorry, not, not 1.2. I meant that to be 1.6, there we go. And 15% uh, on the weekend, that should be that should be a little bit more applicable. Let's keep an eye on overall what these uh, nerf demands are. And we'll also make sure we play our game faster so that we get some better progress on that side of things. And then I think uh, the Paladin is a B tier, Ranger's B tier. It's actually just demands for nerf as well. Uh, what I did want to do is up the base mana on our Rangers because, uh, well, specifically Sir X God, who sucks at this game. Sorry, Tayton demonstrated to us that uh, maybe there's not enough mana on the Angari Rangers. So because of them, I'm actually going to buff their overall mana. And then uh, abilities, uh, I, I've been thinking about this, and I think the root and place, root and place actually may be only three seconds on this. So there is some counter ability, but I'm going to keep the weak and the same on there. That's a pretty strong ability. And I feel like players should be able to utilize that a little more effectively. And then lastly, but not leastly, our Paladin boy um, doesn't need a nerf, or sorry, doesn't need a buff, but they are B tier, and I would like to see them a little bit higher. So I'm going to bring up their base health just slightly to 16. I'm going to bring up base mana as well to 12. So that's a considerable buff in my eyes. Uh, the other thing I wanted to change, oh, not, uh, not Blessing of Light, uh, the Divine Hammer. I wanted to take Divine Hammer, and instead of a root in place, I don't like this because the animation for root in place is like vines coming out of the ground, and I realize that's just an asset that's in this game, and that's fine, 
Uh, but I, I want to make it a stun, because the stun kind of goes along with the applicableness of, uh, you know, this being like a like a lightning hammer of sorts. So, uh, not, not 20, just 2.0, thank you. We're going to apply this as a two-second stun, um, which might be a little on the OP side. Um, I'm actively going to also take the mana cost on this slightly up, but I'm going to keep everything else on them the same. So this has... Uh, Oh, Blessing of Light has no mana cost? Well, that's interesting. That's unacceptable. Um, it needs to have some mana cost, because it has a heal and a protect. I mean, we've actually technically just sort of nerfed uh, nerfed this quite a bit by putting a mana cost on it. But that's okay, we'll just move on. We'll see what uh, everything else ends up evening out to. Yeah, I think, uh, I think they're in a pretty healthy state, though. So, we'll keep all those the same. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on those numbers as time goes by. For the time being though, let's make a very pretty entrance to our mountain pass of Karak. So first and foremost, what I actually, uh, actually want to focus here is, uh, don't remember, I think it, it has the arrow, yeah, the arrow pointy up one, that's the one I want. Um, because just like I had down here, where is it? Yeah, down here in Eastwash, we have uh, this big uh, rune stone that's kind of mysteriously at this crossroad. Not necessarily because it's a crossroad, but from a positioning format on the map, uh, I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of background thought on the lore of this universe, and uh, I would like another big rock here, and those two things are going to sort of be interconnected. So we're going to place this, and I don't even remember how big the other one is, but this one's about to be super huge. And then what I need to do is, uh, well... I don't want to give anything away, but I need to position this so that it's facing a specific direction. I can't really see where I'm trying to face from here. What am I aiming for? So that big pillar here is... Well, that actually might be pretty close to where I needed to... No, not really. It's got to be a little bit to the left of that. Yeah, so I believe it's facing this way. Is it kind of straight on with the red? It is straight on with the red arrow there. Which, uh, which actually is pretty close to where I want it to be. So without giving anything away, yes, that's the direction this magical rune stone needs to face. And I want to put it uh, maybe like right about here. And then just like the other one, we'll give it, uh, give it some character, I think, and give it a little tilt maybe like that. And then uh, let's have it like really leaning forward, kind of over, over the road, sort of slightly kind of precarious looking. And then we need to... Add some more things. Can I, uh, how big can this be? And can it, can I make it a tunnel? I don't know, it's, it might not be, could make it a tunnel, but it, that would have to be super big and I don't want it that big. <gasps> Sir X God has logged in. Oh, here we go. The games have started once again. Try not to laugh too hard at their failure, but uh, where are they at here? Oh, everyone's walking around in the water again. Where are you going? Oh, he's fighting some crocodiles. And he killed Crocodile. Congratulations, Sir Xcott. Now, his player class did get a little bit of a buff, so hopefully he uh, he does a little bit better than he has now. Oh, fighting two, three, four, four Crocodiles. Oh, he's kiting them now. Oh, he's got, he's got, ooh, oh, never mind, died. Okay, well, let's just move on from that, because um, let's be honest, we can only watch him die so many times. Okay, so what I want to have here is, uh, this is not going to be like a enemy-ish type fortress, but... Uh, I do want I do want this to kind of feel like it's it's a major entry port of travel in uh, our empire. And so as a result, I'm going to utilize some of these uh, other pieces here. Let's kind of back it up maybe there-ish. And um, that is, uh, that's in fact not what I wanted to have happen. So, uh, hmm. What if I put it kind of over here instead? Okay, that's um, also bad. All right, let's just let's just kind of different region. Why can't I? Why can't I? Sir X God has died again. That's good to know. Yeah, I don't like how high this is. This is a problemo. Maybe how about how about we try this? Oh, Sir X God has died again. I'm just gonna keep a keep our tabs on that again because this is getting out of hand. Okay, so even if that's one square, for some reason it's decided that it wants to be king of the hill. Hey, Sir X guy's died again. What if I put it over here? Why? Why are you doing this to me? 
Okay, how about if we go, like, I don't know, here? Still somewhat problematic. But that actually might work better. Hold on. If I go, maybe if I angle this, uh, kind of like that. Ooh, that actually flattened out really well. It, uh, it has made this hill more severe, but I've decided I was already going to put, like, a staircase there anyways. Okay, we're going to go uh, up and over and over and uh, probably over again. And then we're going to go underneath like so. Okay, so now we have kind of a, uh, a port entry like this. Now, this is a little bizarre. Well, actually, you know what? Uh, hmm. Maybe I need to reapproach exactly what I'm aiming for the result of this. Okay, 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 okay. I'm actually thinking maybe it should go down here. So let's just put that there. Oh, that actually decided to play nicely. And then uh, let's go up, over, 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 so that we can get, uh, come on, over the road. Ooh, that's not, uh, that's not ideal. Srex God has logged out. Okay, so if this is, hold on. Wait, can I? Well, that was unexpected. I didn't know I could just place it on the on the road like that. Well, that, uh, that this actually helps us because now I can just go like bada bing, bada boom, bam, and kablam, and now I've got like a singular doorway kind of uh, situation here. And then I can take this out this direction, kind of close to the mountains, but not uh, not too close without it uh, disrupting too much. And then let's go and take it out this way. That way we've got kind of like an entrance to the mountain pass, uh, like a like a port of entry sort of, because this is like a major part of the empire and strategically, uh, you know, if, if an army had to travel to the main city to try and take it, it'd have to pass through here. So you've got to have like little choke points to take advantage of. Obviously, Zephyr, I've concluded, is part of our empire as well, but then you've got a dividing line kind of here along the river where it's like, you know, the Angari Empire kind of borders close to that as well. Now, they are allied technically because all of our factions and player classes are working together, but they are technically two separate uh, social and cultural entities. Okay, so we'll kind of start with that. I think uh, I actually like the way the little wood terraces are up on top here like it's uh, a little guard entry point and then I need to create a, a segment through here where you know the players won't pass through so we're gonna cover this uh, with some rock let's, um, let's flatten this and then we'll kind of start to create some segments through here blow this up how big is too big? Um, I guess if I position it into the rock enough, I can make a pass that the, uh, what's it called? The hot air balloon can pass through. So let's, let's shrink this down a little bit. I need to, I need to, okay, that hits that a little bit. So that's not good. Maybe if I go a little bit to the side and then drop. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we can kind of go make it so it looks like this is kind of built into the rock. Kind of got a lot of snow patches segments there, but uh, we will just work with it. Let's go one big one kind of here. See how far I can sink this. Yeah, that, that'll work. So now we still have a segment where our hot air balloon can go over. And then what we need to do is create a wall inside of there. We'll just use our nice little simple wood wall. And oh boy, this is going to be tough to find. Maybe I just kind of go, yeah, from down here. Let's go here and then... I guess in a perfect world, I could just take it down this way, and then that's... Yeah, if I just kind of go that, 
and then got a mountain right there. So if I just kind of take this right up to there, and then if I snap to wherever the start was over here, then I can just kind of go up the side, snap to there, but then please don't snap to anything else. Thank you. Go, so it's hidden to about there, and then let's take it up. Basically, again, to where it says untraversable terrain, to there. Okay, so this should not have players go through it now. Too dangerous to go up that way, you have to go through this way, but if you pay for the expensive hot air balloon, you get to bypass all that. Fantastic stuff. All right, now I want to... I need to clean this up in here a little bit. I'm gonna grab these trees, and what I'm gonna do is kinda have them start to fade out. We'll put like a couple small ones in here. Go up a tier, in there. Maybe up on the hill here. I do, oh shoot, I gotta remember that there is a hot air balloon. Which means I might have to move this one. So I wanna have that definitely transfer kind of like filter through like uh, there's other stuff going on. I gotta be careful though with the trees in general because I am gonna put more ships coming through here and they've gotta have a way to kind of go through these segments as well. Then what I want these to transition to is we're gonna look at some of our other pine tree options here. I know there's, these are the older ones I think. Older assets. Not, uh, not terrible. This is kind of the newer one. I do, I do think I like this one a little better. So, because we also have the snowy version, I'm gonna put a couple of these. Yeah, let's have some higher up ones here. Because if you put small trees really high up, it actually makes it look like it's a lot higher than it actually is. And then you put taller ones if you can get away with kind of lower so it creates an optical illusion essentially like you know the bigger trees up close make it look like obviously they're even closer and then the really tiny trees way up there make it look like it's really far away so we'll kind of strategically place some of these not too many because I want it to feel like it's you know a rocky cliff Okay, and then we'll throw in some of the non-snowy ones. We'll cluster these maybe more so than we have the uh, the other varieties of the uh, the redwood version. And the idea here would be, uh, you know, create somewhat of a hidden element so as you kind of start to come through here. Things feel like they're slowly revealed. Let's go even smaller. Yeah, that's starting to feel a little better. Like, it should feel like you go from like semi loosely dense forest that kind of transitions into the sandy bits. Uh, we'll, we'll have to figure out some more stuff to kind of place in here. But then as you move out of the redwoods, it starts to get denser into the pines and then the snow starts falling and we're gonna enter our uh, little valley here.
All right, that's quite a bit uh, of small detailing, but I uh, didn't expect to necessarily get that far. We're gonna need more trees through the kind of central portion of the valley here. I do like what I'm getting at with the uh, cliff sides here. Oh, I'm gonna have to fix that a little bit. There's a little crevice here. Yeah, so I wanna keep doing some more cliff sides with uh, this segment here, kind of make it narrow a little bit. And then uh, some of the feedback I got in the comments and on the Discord were actually people wanted to see a cave or a tunnel and at first, I'll admit I was kind of against it, but maybe that would be a really fun transition. Not a big one, but like a very short kind of like, you enter a cave when there's still some grass, a short cave, and then you kind of pop out right here into this dense snowy pass, like a good little transition point. So maybe I'll work on that next a little bit. Well, that's actually not what I ended up working on next. I had a quick thought about uh, building more uh, bridges using the teleporters and uh, why I hadn't decided to try and actually try and build a modular building around the teleporter like I've been doing with uh, bri uh, not bridges like bridges now but like I've been doing with roads and other things because uh, yeah it just seemed like it should have been a logical choice early on so here you can see I'm putting together some modular buildings we're gonna build over the top of the teleporters cover them up and then bada bing bada boom uh, they're hidden so now I could actually work on a bridge I also obviously tried to make sure that I uh, got rid of some of the conflict with uh, the airship kind of getting in the way, making sure it wasn't running into buildings and whatnot, so, and then I actually had an upgrade, so we'll go ahead and add that. I think I, I think I did AstroTurf, I think I click on, yeah, yeah, no, no, hugs, no, no, I don't think I did hugs. There you go, yeah, there it is, oh, fluff, sorry, I did fluff, yikes. So go ahead and release that, and then, uh, yeah, I keep checking the airship just to make sure that it's not going to run into anything. And then the overall goal here was I wanted to create a little bit different bridge compared to the ones I did last time. So I took the watchtower asset, decided to put that at the base, kind of use it as a support in the middle of the bridge. So it's going to have a little bit different of a look compared to the last ones. Kind of then take a table, shoot that off the end a little bit so there's support coming off there. And then I use the shipwreck mast again, like I've been using all over the place in this playthrough. Kind of give it a little bit of a visual support there. And then from there, yep, still checking the airship. I think I moved the building. Yeah, I moved the building a little bit more. And this is where I ran into an issue because it kept moving the ground up really high. And I wanted to make sure that the airship wasn't going to run into the bridge, the watchtower, the uh, arid kind of landmark tower over there as well. It gave me a lot of trouble. Eventually, I think I got it to a spot that kind of worked and uh, finagled it a little bit more, but... Yeah, overall it took some time, but got that in a comfortable spot. And then, like I've done so many times before, started to uh, take some of these ladder pieces and we'll put together the bridge. This is spread up pretty fast, so it should go relatively quick. And I wanted to take, again, a little bit different approach on this bridge. So what I actually did was I created a little bit of the sag, kind of like I've done with the suspension bridges in the past, but then I ended up just kind of going straight across the rest of the way so it kind of goes curved and then it flattens out get it lined up on this end go to the other side do the same thing a little bit of a sag to start with curve it up slowly but surely obviously this takes some time so it's actually kind of nice to just speed up the build and then just talk over it like this get it connected to that building looking pretty good so far uh, I started experimenting with deleting some of the sides of the building here and it actually messed with the you can see the ladders were moving up and down, so I figured, okay, you know what, it's fine the way it is, let's not uh, let's not break it. Let's add some supports with the rocks here, so it looks like it's a little more aesthetically pleasing. This one gave me a little bit of trouble trying to get it sized and sunk correctly, but uh, eventually I got there. So that goes in, add a few more in, up uh, next to the airship depot, and then over by the other layered arid landmark, next to our Kobold Civil War making it look aesthetically pleasing. Then we go ahead and uh, take a little quick look around, admire some stuff, and then we put in some support. So again, the shipwreck mast, curve it up a little bit, and all I did was put it underneath. I didn't want to have the suspension bridge look like I've had in the past. Decided to take this more of like a underside support. I actually posted a picture of this on the uh, MMORPG Tycoon 2 Discord, so some of you might have actually seen this ahead of time. So a little spoiler there, I guess. Get the other side taken care of here, line it up, 
And uh, yeah, I was actually really pleased with how this bridge came out. It was pretty easy to make, less time consuming than trying to put all of those little chain pieces in there like I've done on other builds. And uh, yeah, it still looked really good, like it was well supported. There's no handrails on it, but you know, that's part of the precariousness of it. And then we can see a nice little look around here. So good use of the watchtower, I thought, to kind of give it some other function. And uh, now, now we have a bridge that goes to the other region, to the west of Eastwash, which we haven't really sent any players to yet. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, looking pretty good. I was pleased with how this came out and didn't take very long. And then of course, you know, gotta add some doors. So go ahead and plug some doors onto each side so it looks like it actually goes somewhere. All of the bridges, by the way, I just made the teleport cost zero gold. So that way there's no, you know, conflict of trying to pay your way across. It's just kind of like, go use the bridge, basically. And then I finally decided to go over, okay, let's go ahead and work on some more of these, uh, these rock assets over in our mountain pass. Kind of built this up and what I wanted to do is create kind of a an archway so I kind of stack the rocks up high on each side I'm building a little bit of a cave system on that uh, right side there and then the archway I use some of these main rocks to start with and then what I decided to do eventually here you'll see I end up taking some of the actual archway rock pieces to kind of finish it off so once all the snowy bits are in place uh, kind of line it up so it's not touching the road Grab the archway pieces, line those up so it actually gets a covered covered kind of top to it. And then I cover up some of the snow here on the side too because I want it snow on the inside of the, uh, the tunnel. Didn't really make sense. And then yeah, go ahead and go over to this little ca uh, campsite I'm gonna build, which is in the underside of the rock on the right side before you go into that cave. Add some little carts and stuff, get some supplies loaded up on it. We're gonna add some NPCs. I'm gonna put a quest giver in here, which we'll build upon later. And then I decided to add some brazers in here. So there's some light torches kind of in the tunnel. And then I wanted kind of a snowy asset as you got out. Doesn't look too good there yet, but uh, over time I think we'll start to finagle those things and make those assets look better. Finally put some roads through our little town and then we're gonna add in some modular buildings. Not too crazy, uh, but wanted to kind of create those first little assets that kind of create the, the functioning look to our town. And then, yeah, more trees. Got to have the trees, so plug those in. And this is really just like a matter of changing the size randomly, changing the location, kind of making it look like it's a little natural in the sense that it's randomized. Wanted to feel like the town was kind of covered up, but not too over the top kind of shifts down the size of the trees actually get smaller as you get closer to that little cave and then they actually get closer or smaller as you get closer to the kind of guard uh, tower archway that we built on the other side try to fix this snowy bit a little bit almost getting better to where I where I want it to be and then another upgrade of course uh, this one I don't remember what I did actually uh, this one was oh astroturf there we go a little more advertising not that we really need more people at this point we need more people leveling up is what we need and then last but certainly not least went through and added some snow on top of those arch pieces so that way it looked like it aesthetically fit everything else and there it is yeah the beginning of our snowy town uh kind of mountain village leading into our tunnel here kind of going through and then it's going to open up into the first portion of our mountain pass so yeah this will be a uh, this will be pretty fun to build out. I'm thinking this is going to be, um, you know, a lot of different build episodes to kind of start with before we really figure out what we're going to do quest-wise. But there's a lot of room to grow here, a lot of room to experiment and play with. I think it looks pretty cool to start with just in that first little corner. So, uh, yeah, I'm pleased, and I hope that you'll stick around for more. If you enjoy this kind of commentary over the top of the builds, let me know too, because I can do more of that. But until next time, I'm Kyle. This has been That One Playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. And I will see you in the next episode. Have a good day.